Hi, this is Mac Pritchard. I had a cycling accident recently and broke several bones. While I recover, I need to take a short break from podcasting. So through March 3rd, we're sharing some of our most popular interviews from the last five years. I hope you enjoy them, and thank you for being a listener. This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of Max List. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps professionals find fulfilling careers. I believe that lifelong learning is the key to a successful career. And to get a better job, you need to learn the job hunting skills that will help you find the role of your dreams. That's why we're here today. Every week on Find Your Dream Job, I interview a different career expert. We discuss the tools and tactics you need to find the work you want. This week, I'm talking to Dallin Vanterpool about how to choose the right career for you. Dallin Vanterpool works with young professionals. He says one of the biggest challenges this group faces is picking a career. But it's not just a problem for millennials, according to Dallin. Most of us will change careers one or more times in our 40-plus years in the workplace. Job seekers who make the best choices, Dallin tells me today, ask themselves five questions. And the answers help these people land in careers that let them excel and look forward to going to the office. Want to learn more? Listen in now at the Max List Studio as I interview Dallin Vanterpool about how to choose the career that's right for you. Dallin Vanterpool is a private banker and career development expert from the British Virgin Islands. Dallin hosts the Focus the Fire podcast. His show helps young professionals build meaningful careers that lead to more time, money, and freedom. He joins us today from Panama City, Panama. Dallin, thanks for being on the show. Mac, thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, and I I just want to begin by giving a huge shout out. I know you recently recorded your 100th episode on your show, Focus the Fire. That is a big milestone. Congratulations. Hey, thank you so much. We were talking before in the pre-show. It's a huge milestone for us here. We're pushing on that for quite some time to make sure we get out there and cross that 100 mark. It feels good to be in the triple digits. Well, I encourage listeners to check out your show. I had the good fortune to listen to a number of episodes um, to get ready for this conversation, and you're doing great work. Appreciate Um, it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And our topic today is careers and how to choose the right career for you. Um, Who do you see struggle with this question? There are a couple of groups, Mac, I see struggling with this. It, it starts out first with the, the early career seekers, people who are you know, halfway through college or they just finished college, they're trying to choose a major or they just graduated and now they're like, whoa, okay, now I actually have to do something real with my life besides just wake up and go to class. So there's that group. But then there's also the, the I, I call them the young professional. They've been out of school a little while, maybe they're one or two years into a career And they're now realizing that they're doing something that they don't absolutely love or the rewards aren't what they thought it would be. It's not all it was was cracked up to be in their head. So that's the group I usually see struggling when I talk to them about uh, how to choose that right career and what they want to do. It happens as well in older folks, but I think it's more, I think by the time you get older, you've already settled into whatever you want to do, even if you don't love it sometimes. But that younger crowd is who is usually struggling with this question about how to choose the right career, the, the what do I do with my life question. And I know that I, I too see older workers, particularly um, who are in their 50s, thinking about changing careers altogether. And I know a lot of what we're going to talk about today will be applicable to them. But in your practice, I, I know too that you work with young professionals in their 20s and 30s. When you have those conversations, I, I also know from our earlier conver- conversations and reading your blog that you encourage people to answer five questions when they think about choosing a career. And I'd like to walk through those five questions. How does that sound? Absolutely agree. We can definitely do that. All right. Number one on your list is you ask people to answer this. What do you believe? 
Tell us more about that. Why is that an important question? Yeah, I like to start there because I think when folks get bombarded with the question of what do I do, want to do with my life, they get super stressed out and they try to get directly into the mechanics of, you know, what's the name of the company, what's the salary, all the, and all those questions. Don't get me wrong, as you know, as a career professional as well, those things are important. But I try to get them to step back just a little bit. And before we start thinking about the different companies that you might want to work for, let's take an internal look at what you actually believe. What are your limiting beliefs? Because at the end of this process, we want to make sure that you end up choosing a career or working with a company that doesn't conflict with your personal values, with the things that matter to you. So if you're the kind of person who says, well, I love spending lots of time with my family. Okay, great. Maybe you don't need to be thinking about a job that requires 80 hours a week. And that's not something to feel bad about. It's just what you believe in and what's really important to you. So I try to get people to start thinking internally first before we even go out there and start talking about resumes or anything else that you know might come as part of the job hunting process. Another part of that is also, you know, what kind of things are you definitely not willing to do? For example, I remember in my early career, I was in public accounting and a number of the folks that started with me, a number of, especially the, the female coworkers, you know, they said, you know, I, I don't want to make partner. I, I, I like my job. I, I think it's great. I enjoy accounting. But they've looked at what partners have to do, especially women partners. And they said, look, I, I really value spending more time with my family or different things that are important to them. And they said, I just don't want to be partner. And that, as much as it might seem like a negative thing or somebody's copping out, I think that's an important distinction for folks to make early on and being very clear and honest about what they believe and what matters to them, because that's going to help you and save you from a lot of heartache and confusion later on. So the first step in this is usually, for me, when I'm talking to folks, what do you believe? Okay. And the answers typically are about professional goals. Do I want to be partner or not? What, or about values that matter personally. Are there other elements that you like to see people draw out when they answer that question, what do you believe? Yeah, absolutely. We usually get into talking a lot about folks and their limiting beliefs about money in particular. Because financial stress, financial struggles are obviously a big thing that come up in a lot of relationships, personal development things in your personal life. So I ask folks, where, where do you stand on this money question? Do you think that's important in life? Do you want to have luxury and luxurious things in life? And the answer varies from person to person. Some people don't mind living a, minimal, a minimalist life. They don't care to travel much. They don't want to have fancy cars and different things. Other folks, you know, they feel like they didn't have that growing up and they want to do things. They want to do uh, big things for their community. They choose, you have to choose at the, at the beginning of this here when you're talking about what you believe. Do you want to be the person making a donation or do you want to be the person that has so much money that you're starting a foundation or creating a charity that then goes out and makes bigger donations? And either one is fine, but I think there's just an important point for us to sift out here as we're thinking about what career you want to go into. I know the second of your five questions is, what, what's the problem you want to solve? And why do job seekers need to think about problem solving when they choose a career? Why is that important? Well, my, my, my philosophy in this is, you know, money changes hands when problems get solved. And if you're going into a career, the only way you're going to be able to sustain that performance at a high level, the only way you're going to be able to put up that quality, even when the money isn't there or even when it gets tough or when you have to work on a weekend or staying late or something, it has to be something that is deeply meaningful to you. So I say, think about the problem that you want to solve. What is that thing out there? And this is an easy way to help narrow down if you're, if you're juggling, juggling a lot of options. If you have listeners who are listening to the show and you're juggling different options, what is the problem you actually want to solve? What is it that you go around and you see, oh man, I wish someone would just figure out how to do that. Or I think I know a way to do this particular thing better. It really bothers me when people do this particular thing here and it's not done well. And if you start thinking about the problem that you want to solve, all of a sudden now you're carving off leaves or carving off layers from this thing and you're getting closer and closer to the actual career that you want to choose. So choose or identify a problem where one, you have a deep passion for getting the solution to that problem and something where you think you can be excited to pour loads of energy into it. Because if you go into a career, especially if you plan to be successful, if you're listening to you know, the Find Your Dream Job podcast, I'm, I'm already assuming that you're a high performer or you're well on your way to being there and you want to do well. 
Well, to get to the top of the food chain in any career, whatever you try to do, it's going to take a lot of time and energy. So you want to make sure if you're going to be spending 40 plus hours, I don't even know why we say 40 hours a week anymore because I mean, just about everybody works more than 40 hours. But if you're going to be spending that much time doing any particular thing, you want to make sure that it is something that you really care about, something that you really want to solve. So you know, I say focus on finding a problem that you personally, not just the company out there or in a, you know, a very broad way. No, find something that you want to dedicate 10, 15, 20 years of your life to solving. Can you share an example of someone you've worked with who went looked at that question and they they came up with an answer? What was the problem they decided to solve? Yeah, sure, absolutely. A friend of mine, you know, she was looking at uh, she came and we were talking about careers and different things, and she said, I asked her the question, "What is it? What is the problem that you want to solve?" And the problem at the point at the, that point, she was looking at a number of different things, number of different options on the table. And, you know, she said, look, uh, I really want to help people, you know, become more confident in themselves. I said, okay, we're getting closer. Well, what kinds of people, you know, what is it? What is the actual thing you wanted to hear? Well, the problem is I want to help people get confident so they can do X, Y, Z. And as we started digging deeper and deeper into really shaving off the, the, the generic layers off of that answer, it really got down to the point where she said, look, you know, I want to help this kind of person solve this problem. I want them to become more, they want to become more, help them become more confident so that they can then go on to teaching people how to do a particular thing. So we see her now, she was able to say some things that really jumped out to me. She said, I want to teach. I said, oh, okay. So you're not on the side of just, you know, creating random things. You don't necessarily want to sell products. You, you actually want to teach. So then we can say, okay, based on that problem that you already want to solve, you, you, you just talked about it. We've now identified the kind of person or we've hinted towards the kind of person and we've hinted towards the way you may want to deliver that solution. So that's, that's how that starts shifting in there as you, as you start thinking about what problem you want to solve. And you're able to sustain it for a longer period of time and do more work because it's not just a job anymore. It's something you actually are personally invested in. Your third question as you take people through this process is to get clear about uh, the clients that a company works with. And you recommend people ask, who do I want to serve? How does this help get clear about a career choice? Sure. And this came up for me, especially when I was thinking about starting my podcast. And I got in contact with a gentleman named John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneurs on Fire. And in the process of you know getting ready and preparing for this podcast, one of the things that John makes you do, you have to create what he calls an avatar. Now, the avatar is literally answering this question. Who do you want to serve? The interesting thing about this is not just a general answer. Like, oh, I want to serve young people. No, 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 no. Like, if you, if you were to think about the avatar, you're actually trying to create a literal person. Like, for example, my avatar for the podcast actually has a name, Angie. She has an age. I know how many kids Angie has. You know, I know what struggles Angie's going through. You're literally thinking deeply about the person that you want to so you, that you want to serve, right? And that again is going to inform the kinds of careers that you might want to choose. If you're more interested in working one on one with people, if you're thinking more about older people, younger people, men, women, you know, whatever the specific groups are, that's going to help you niche down and narrow down even more on what you want to do. Then you can identify companies or businesses that serve those particular groups or that particular person. So this is all again helping you to just you know narrow down the wide swath of things that you could possibly be doing with your life if you scroll down LinkedIn or you pull up Indeed or whatever it is and see all these jobs. This is helping you to sift through for yourself which ones actually matter to you. Okay. There are two more questions. We're going to get to them after the break, but uh, just to repeat the the first three that listeners should could. Consider answering, what do you believe, what problem do you want to solve, and who do I want to serve? So stay with us. We're going to be back in just a moment, uh, and we're going to talk about the other five, two questions you need to answer when choosing the right career for you. Find Your Dream Job comes to you from the Maxless Studios in Portland, Oregon. Portland is also the home to some of the biggest athletic shoe companies in the world, Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour, they all have offices here. And lots of people dream of working for these famous brands. But the sneaker world is fiercely competitive. Having insider knowledge, however, can help you get your foot in the door. 
That's why I'm excited to tell you about Sneaker School. It's an online certificate program from the Fashion Institute of Technology and Complex Media. Sneaker School lets you explore career paths in the shoe industry. The site includes more than 45 on-demand video lessons that feature some of the biggest names in footwear. And you get to learn practical skills through self-paced projects and simulations. Check out Sneaker School for yourself. Go to sneakerschool.com slash Mac. Again, that's sneakerschool.com slash Mac. Now, let's get back to the show. We're back in the Max List studio. I'm talking with Dallin Vanterpool. He's the host of the career podcast, Focus the Fire. And he joins us today from Panama City. We're talking about how to choose the right career for you. And uh, Dallin has a model. It, it involves answering five questions. And uh, just before the break, we talked about question number three, getting clear about who do I want to serve. And I love that because often, uh, again, with all of these questions, we're going to talk about the final two in a moment, uh, you're, you're thinking about what you want to do, why, and who's going to benefit. And what I'm not hearing you say, Dallin, is um, you can – choose a career by going to a job board and, and looking at job listings. <laughs> now, that's that's an option. I mean, people do it all the time. Yeah. And I think that's why people like Mac are out here trying to help us, you know, do that in a, I guess, a more effective way, a better way. Yeah, you can jump out to a job board and, you know, kind of lick your thumb and stick it up in the wind and just, you know, spin the, spin the wheel there and, and stop on something. But I think that is what has actually contributed to a lot of what we see here in the, now in the workplace. A lot of folks who are you know, you're good at doing things. You, you can do your job. So you're capable, I should say, of doing it. But it's not something you're deeply passionate about. It's not something that brings meaning to your life. And I can tell you right now, you know, I've, I've been on jobs where, you know, it, it means something and jobs where you don't. I mean, I've been on jobs where we work 50, 60, 70 hours a week. And if you're going to put that much time into something, you know, time away from your family, time away from other things that matter to you, uh, you want to approach this in a in a more structured way than just you know picking things on a job board, which is why I recommend these kinds of questions to sit down in a you know quiet space and do. Um, whether you do it in a day or you do it over the course of a week, or is something that you revisit more than once as you're going through that job hunting process, or even if you're not job hunting, it may be a good exercise to do right now wherever you are on your current job. Okay. To look at the, look at what you're doing now and see if you can answer these questions. And do you like the answers that are coming up based on the job you're doing right now? Yeah. Well, let's get back to the five questions. Number four is uh, once you are clear about who you want to serve and, and those problems you want to solve, number four is how do you deliver that solution? Uh, tell us more about that. What, what do you want to get at with answers to that question? Sure. By the time you get to this point in the exercise, you, you probably have a few ideas about maybe the companies that you want to work for, the kinds of things you want to do, uh, the kind of business you may want to start if you're trying to be an entrepreneur or a freelancer. But now we're getting down to some more tactile uh, parts of this process. You know, How do you want to deliver that solution? Are you the kind of person that's thinking about creating a product? Are you, are you trying to be an inventor kind of side? Are you interested in product or are you think products? Or are you thinking more about a service? Just like the example I gave before, you know, the person who I was talking to, they were more interested on the service side. They wanted to teach. You know, and then you can start thinking as well about how do you want to put this out there? You know, distribution channels. At this point, it starts sounding almost like you're not thinking about a job. You're actually thinking about a business. And I think that's absolutely the conclusion that you need to get to at some point in your job search and stop thinking about yourself as, oh, I'm an employee and I'm trying to find a job. No, 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 no. You are a service provider or you have a product. What you're trying to find is a client out there that's willing to pay you for it. Even if you're not going to be an entrepreneur, I try to encourage people to really start thinking along these lines. You are a provider. You, you, you have a business. You are a business. You know, if people will say, well, you know, how's work today? Do you like your boss? I was like, I don't have a boss. I have a client. That's the person that pays me. And I'm trying to make my client happy today by doing what they're paying me to do. And that's a, that's a really empowering mental shift to make for people, for people to make, because then it takes you out of this, uh, this, sub, this, this subdued role in the job hunt. 
You know, you're not just out there hoping that somebody blesses you with a job and, you know, you're there taking pressure or taking instructions from someone else. No, you're actually out there serving clients. Because think about it. If it was a regular business, you know, you're, the, you're, you're providing a service and your client pays you. So similar thing in the office or whatever job you go to do, you're actually trying to find the ideal client. So think about how you want to deliver that solution. If it's say, if it's a one-on-one kind of thing you want to do, or do you want to work directly with people in a kind of a consulting way? Do you want to do something where you're able to reach a lot of people all at once? If that's the case, maybe you need to be thinking about in a business that's already established rather than trying to go out there one-on-one knocking on doors. So as you start to think about this, this medium for how you want to deliver that solution, it again helps you narrow out and cross out some of the possible options that are out there for your career choice. I like your point about the importance of the how, because once you're clear about what it is you offer and you think about your employer as, as a client, it, it it's very empowering, isn't it, Dallin? It, because you realize if the relationship you have with your existing employer isn't working for you. If you know what you have to offer and the value that it, it provides, it makes it easier to, to make a transition, doesn't it? Absolutely. And it also makes it easier when you're thinking about doing career transition moves, because now you're not just thinking about finding another job. You are thinking of it from the, from the, from the point of view where you have skills You've been working on those skills, whether it's through schooling, whether it's through practice, seminars, whatever it is, podcasts that you're listening to. You've been honing those skills and increasing your value. And you can walk into the office, I think, with a sense of empowerment, a sense of, a sense of, of, of value. This is not arrogance, mind you. This is not arrogance to say, oh, you know, I can get up and leave this job whenever I want to. No, because this is your client. You wouldn't want to just abandon a client, you know, unexpectedly. But when you start thinking about career transition things, you're not necessarily job hunting, you're client hunting. Where can I take my skills? Where can I shop my skills around to find another client that might get value from what I have to offer? Do you, what's your best tip for listeners to figure out what it is they have to offer? Because self-assessment can be hard and people struggle with being clear about the skills that they provide and the value of it. How do you see people do this well and 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 figure that out. Yeah, the best one of the best things I ever heard along these lines came from a gentleman named Michael Burt. He has a podcast, I think it's called Coach Burt. And he said in one show, I heard this about a year and a half ago, he said, a lot of times our self-assessment is greater than our market value. Now, I remember listening to this podcast and when he said that, I almost dropped my phone, pulled out the headphones about the toss them across the room. He said, your self-assessment can often be higher than your market value. Now, while that's true, I think there are also cases where it's the other way around. You know, your, your self-assessment, you might be being a little bit too hard on yourself. So I, I tell folks, look, look at the things, again, look at the questions we talked about before. Look at the things you enjoy doing, fine. But look at the things that you really do well. And a good hint at this is to ask yourself, and I know we're doing more questions here, is ask yourself, what are the things that people consistently come to me for guidance on? You know, what are the things that people see you as an expert on? When, when the question comes up in the office, when a question comes up on a project, where do people lean on you? What skill sets do people lean on you for? And that can be a really good hint as to uh, what your value is or what are the sources of your value and how good it is. Well, let's talk about your fifth question. And th- you suggest that people ask themselves, how do I want to live? Why, why is this important? This last one for me is, is extremely, extremely crucial. I put this one last for a reason, because I think sometimes when we get into these self-assessment, you know, these questions, these, these introspective exercises, we forget that no one is actually looking at this stuff besides us. You know, we, we think we have to sound very, I don't know, we have to sound very noble and altruistic and we have to sound a particular way to impress people and, to, you know, no, 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 no. Let's have an honest conversation. Have an honest conversation with yourself. How do you actually want to live? What does your quality of life look like? I'll tell you a quick story. When I was getting ready to go to college, I went through high school and I was the kind of kid, I, I, I won't say I was rebellious. <laughs> My parents might say it differently. But once I didn't feel like something mattered, if you couldn't convince me that something was important, I just didn't pay attention to it. And coming through high school, I wasn't good at sports and music was my thing. 
I decided if I wasn't going to be athletic, if I wasn't going to be hot and cute guy, I was going to be the talented guy. So I went hard with music. And I wanted nothing more when I graduated high school than to either go to law school, because I love watching Perry Mason and Matlock, or I was going to go to music school. And my dad and my parents sat me down and they said, you know, they had this kind of question with me, this kind of conversation. They said, well, how do you want to live? What are the things that are important to you? What is your qu- Describe to us the quality of life that you think you would want to enjoy. So I'm trying to be very... I'm negotiating with my parents at this point. So I try to be very, uh, very verbose and, and articulate about things. I, I listed off the things that matter. And my dad said to me, he said, well, son, you know, I, I'm listening to what you say you want to do in life and how you want to live. And I got to tell you that while nothing is wrong with being a musician... It takes a long time for a musician to get to that kind of lifestyle if they ever make it at all. You're going to have to go through a lot of years, if you ever do make it, to be able to live that kind of lifestyle. And, you know, after having that conversation and being realistic about it, he said, look, do you want to be the musician that ends up, you know, not having a lot of money, but knows a little bit about business? Or do you want to be an excellent business person who also happens to be a good musician? And that's where it kind of went down. He said, look, do something, choose a career that's going to be able to afford you the lifestyle that you actually want. You're not setting aside all the other things you're interested in. There'll, there'll be time for those things on a, to a lesser degree, but do something that really allows you to live the way you want to live. For example, for me, you know, I want to be to a place where if something happens to my family, whatever happens and all the income... Uh, all the income burden has to fall on me. I want to know that I'm doing something that makes enough money to where I can support that. You know, I wanted that. That's a big deal for me. So that's part of how I want to live. I want to be able to travel. <laughs> a big joke I make all the time, not a joke, a big claim I make a lot on the podcast is that I want to live a lifestyle where I don't always travel in first class, but I want to have the option to travel in first class. I want to be in coach but I want to be there because I don't feel like paying the extra amount, not because I'm not able to pay the extra amount. So I encourage people to have these kind of conversations with themselves and really be honest about how they want to live so that they can create that, like, that meaningful career and choose a career that can get them down that path. Well, terrific advice. It's been a great conversation. Tell us more about what's next for you. Sure, Mac. Uh, Next up on this year, we got a lot of exciting things coming up. The biggest thing for me this year is to start doing more coaching calls. In 2018, we were doing a lot of these informally here and there, but we're really going to start structuring that, especially by the time this goes live. So if you want to have a one-on-one coaching call with me to talk through your career challenges, we can do that, as well as we're getting ready to set up some free webinars and folks can access all of that over at DallonV.com. Also at DallonV.com, they will be able to access our blog, YouTube channel, and the Focus to Fire podcast. So they can do all that over there at DallonV.com and connect with me on social media at DallonV. Great. I'll be sure to include that uh, uh, handle and the URL in the show notes. Dallin, thanks for being on the show today. Thanks so much for having me. I love the five questions that Dallin posed about how to choose the right career for you. One question that stood out for me was asking yourself, how do I want to live? And when you ask that question, it not only helps you get clear about the work you want to do, but also about the finances that you're going to need to support the life you want. And that's important because when there's a job offer on the table, you've got to be ready to talk about money. So many people aren't prepared to do that We've got a guide that can help. It's called How to Talk About Money in an Interview. And you can get your free copy today. Go to maxlist.org slash money talk. Get the salary you need. Go to maxlist.org slash money talk. Well, thanks for listening to this week's episode of Find Your Dream Job. And please join us next Wednesday. Our guest expert will be Colby Reed. He'll share his informational interview tips for young professionals. Until next time. Thanks for letting us help you find your dream job.
This is Mac Pritchard again. I hope you enjoyed this interview from our archives. Please join us next week as we share through March 3rd, some of our most popular interviews from the last five years. And thank you for being a listener.